Hello viewers, welcome to Health Profile. Today we are here at Sunshine Hospital. Dr. Naveen Mehrotra is with us, consultant neurosurgeon. Hello doctor. So hi, I am again Dr. Naveen Mehrotra, consultant neurosurgeon at the Sunshine Hospital Paradise branch. So today I am going to share my experiences about a common neurosurgical tumor we see called as glioma. Okay. Doctor, as you said, it's a common thing, uh, common glioma, common condition in brain thing. So, what is actually glioma? You see, brain, as I told you in the previous talks also, is, is covered by a membrane which is called as dura matter. Yeah. So, the tumor which arises within the brain matter are called as intraaxial tumors and the tumors which arise outside the brain parenchyma or from the membrane are called as extra-axial tumors. Okay. So the glioma is the commonest intra-axial tumor. Mm -hmm. So if you, if you can slightly recollect your college days, you remember that brain is made up of two matter. One is called as gray matter yes, yes, yes. and white, white matter. matter. Yes. So this glioma arises from the white matter. Okay. So glioma is the term from all the white matter tumors and it is commonest. And this is what it is called as glioma. Is it considered dangerous, <coughs> doctor? Yeah, you see, if you if you see glioma, any tumor per se can be dangerous depending upon the location, as I told you before. Yeah. But glioma is is a, is is a very broad term. Normally, what happens? It depends upon the grade of the tumor. Mm -hmm. So the glioma, if you can say, it is divided into majorly for the for as four grades: grade one, grade two, grade three, grade four. So now you all know that grade 1 and 2 yes. are called as low grade gliomas and grade 3 and grade 4 are called as high grade gliomas. Yeah, and if you say grade 4, grade 4 is called as glioblastoma multiforme. Okay. I don't want you to remember this technical name. Mm. So if as, as the grade indicates 1 and 2 have a fairly better outcome and grade 3 median or intermediate and grade 4 has is, is a bad one. Too. Okay. So, actually, what is the main cause, doctor, for this glioma? You see, it's very difficult to put the cause that that why this glioma has come up. There are a lot of studies going on, but but none has been conclusive that if you have this problem, you will going to develop a glioma. Okay. One thing they have seen that if you get irradiation or some sort of radiation therapy to the brain in the childhood days, probably you will develop a tumor during some time later in the life, but not, not all patients, few patients. Okay. Secondly, it is not associated with glioma per se, but any patient who has got a tumor, sometimes there are few genetic conditions in which you may develop a glioma or a tumor in the brain. Okay. So, I, I would say genetic or previous or predisposition to reduce Radiations are the things that are known or to be associated that you may develop okay. a glioma. But there is no uh, exact cause for the no, glioma. No, there is no cause effect relationship like if you have this, you will develop this. Okay. So, how we should identify doctor? Means what are the signs and symptoms will be there, the people are suffering with glioma. Okay. Uh, I think first and the commonest thing is, is, you see majority of the patients, they have two symptoms. Either they have headache or they usually have a seizure disorder. Okay. So headache is headache like you see I have seen I have every patient or every sorry not patient I would say every person in his lifetime must have sometime got a headache. Yeah doctor. But you see there are very few patients who get glioma. Okay. So the, 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 tu, the headache which is associated with tumors or uh, glioma in this case which we can say has got certain features. Mm. Like suppose you have been having headache for some time, maybe a year or so, as in the case of low grade glioma, sometimes the patient has. And but if you find there is a change in the character, meaning thereby that the headache, which was purely a throbbing type, has now become more or changes character. Okay. Initially, suppose it was coming maybe once in a month or twice mm -hmm. in a, or maybe once in two months, but now you feel that the headache is coming more frequently. It's continuous headache, doctor. Yeah, continuous headache. Ultimately, it will become continuous. Mm. Secondly, if you see the frequency of the headache has also changed. Initially, it was not so severe, but now you see that the headache has become more and more severe. So these three characteristics of the headache typically indicate that probably you are having some problem. You need an invest okay. consultation or investigation. Okay. Secondly, the tumor headaches are typically associated more in the morning. Okay, morning time. Morning. Uh, that, that is called as the tumor headache. You especially should in the morning, you get up and you feel a headache and you have vomiting and sometimes the vomiting relieves the headache. 
So why it happens, doctor? Why? How it is Normally, associated with the vomiting and uh, why the people get the yeah, relief? Exactly. After so the what vomiting? happens when we when we sleep? So what happens when we sleep? Our slightly the carbon dioxide levels they increase in the body. Okay. So once these carbon dioxide levels increase, they cause vasodilatation, meaning thereby there is increased blood flow to the brain. So what happens already because of tumor, there is swelling, there is pressure or in the higher end yes, of the brain. Yes. So once more blood goes away, the pressure increases and then it wakes you up because of the headache. And then when you vomit, you say after vomiting, you take deep breaths. Yes. And yeah. then, so what okay. happens, the carbon dioxide gets washed off. Okay. So the carbon dioxide washes out, you, the headache comes down. So the vomiting relieves the headache. This is the, this is the mechanism which usually causes this. Sometimes when you have the headaches, or they may be associated with visual problems also. So any headache which is of a, or raised pressure headache because called the raised means the medical word is an English word pressure means intracranial pressure. Mm -hmm. so sometimes these are the features of raised intracranial pressure and when this raised pressure is more they sometimes can cause visual problems. So any headache which is have changes character it is happening in the morning is associated with the vision problems is, is not a good sign. Moreover, suppose you okay. develop a fits or a seizure yeah, and that seizure also if it is focal meaning thereby only one part of the body is, is getting the shaking. Okay. So that is more likely that you are having an organic pathology or some lesion in the brain. Are there any particular parts that doctor get affected? With the glioma? Yes. Yeah, you see glioma can happen anywhere in the brain. Mm -hmm. It can happen in the front and the front. You see the, the, as I told you the brain is divided into two parts. The cerebral hemispheres, which is the upper supratentorial part, or the below, this we say in common language, hind brain or chinna brain, that is mm -hmm. that is the small hind mm -hmm. brain. So, glioma can happen in any, any part of the brain. It can even involve the brain stem also. Brain stem also. So, I okay. think brain stem, if you know the brain, there is brain and there is brain stem. Brain okay. stem is the most important part. So, glioma, since it is a white matter, white matter is present throughout the brain, it can happen in any part of the brain. It can happen in the frontal lobe, it can happen in the temporal lobe, parietal lobe, occipital lobe, brain stem, cerebral hemisphere. But the commonest site usually is the is the lobe that is the frontal lobe and the temporal lobe. Okay. Is there any severity based on the particular uh, location, doctor? No, if, yeah, exactly. If you see, brain stem is the most vital part of the brain. If we say that we are alive or dead, it's the brain stem functions are the ones who decide whether we are alive or not. So okay. if the brain tumor happens in that area, that is that is not at all a good thing. Mm -hmm. Even it may be low grade, but it can cause a lot of problems. So based on the location, if you say, I would say brain stem and the other thing is chiasmatic hypothalamic locations. That is usually the hypothalamus is another important area of the brain that gets connected with the vision. So that is why the so optic nerve is the nerve of vision and then it goes behind and forms what is called as chiasm. That is a medical word but you can say brain stem and optico chiasmatic locations are the ones because of their location usually do not carry a very good outcome. Okay. Because it is difficult to remove them or difficult to operate upon that areas. So what is the first sign they, were, they may face doctor? You see. Normally, what we say in the clinical dictum, whatever we say is if a young patient has come with a seizure, we always do the scan to rule out tumor. Okay. So, any young patient who has got a seizure disorder okay. should be investigated to rule out a, a tumor. Means, uh, like uh, some doctors say, like fits is very common in children. Yes, fits is the okay. Fits can be a manifestation of many other problems. It can be a manifestation of tumor, it can be a manifestation of infection, it can be a manifestation of TB granuloma, it can be just even when the scan is normal. But normally you see children, I told you adults, young adults. Okay. So in adults, usually the first presentation of a tumor will be seizure. Okay. So, so seizure, headache, these are the two common things which you have. So if you have a seizure, you have to rule out a space occupying lesion. Space occupying lesion means any tumor, any it can be blood, it can be tumor. So that is what you have to rule out. So tumors form the commonest thing. So doctor, what are the diagnostic methods you follow to find out that? MRI of the brain along with contrast, meaning gadolinium is the drug which we give that is called as contrast, is the investigation of choice to diagnose glioma or any brain tumor. So what happens is suppose if it is a low grade glioma as I told you or a high grade glioma. 
So, so first of all, all this, uh, this stage is also will come to know doctor. Yes, we can the confirmation of the grade of the tumor will be based only on pathology, okay. meaning thereby once we remove the tumor, we see under microscope. Mm -hmm. But but we can fairly accurately with our experience and with our uh, MRI findings grade that the patient is having either a low grade tumor or a high grade tumor. Okay. And among grade 4 that is glioblastoma we can say with reasonable surety based on the MRI. Mm -hmm. and especially in the MRI there is new thing which has come up as a MR spectroscopy. Mm -hmm. Meaning thereby that once you have a tumor suppose my hand this is the tumor. The tumor is made up of the periphery and the center. So wherever is the area we can go to the MRI and try to find out the contents what the tumor contains. Depending upon the content of the tumor, like sometimes for the brain tumors, they have got as called as choline peak or creatinine peak, or sometimes they may have lipid peak or NA peak. We can see which type or which can tell that probably you have a glioma or GBM, some other things or not, or TB or, or not that. Okay. So that is why MRI becomes the investigation of choice. One simple thing, if when we give contrast, if the tumor is not taking up the contrast, meaning if the tumor okay. is not seen clearly, yeah, yeah. then probably it is a low grade tumor. Mm -hmm. If it is, uh, if it is taking up the contrast, then probably high grade tumor. The only exception is, is, is a grade one tumor, which is a pilocytic. It sometimes enhances on contrast. Okay. On, on, so this is the the investing. Apart from that, the, the MRI shows us the three dimensional picture, the view, the location of the tumor, the spread of the tumor. And whether it is causing any any pressure on the on the associated edema, there are other things which can be seen on the MRI in a glioma patient. So after you get identified, the patient is like how many stages are there, doctor? Means the treatment for this glioma depends on the stage and grade of the tumor. Yes, doctor. exactly. I think a very good question. The tumor, suppose once we have seen what is the tumor, yeah. to to like okay. Suppose we say it is glioma. Now we have to identify whether it is grade 1, grade 2, grade 3, grade 4. Yeah. Because the, the grading of the tumor is what decides the further treatment option also. Mm -hmm. Surgery forms the mainstay of treatment because without surgery we cannot, cannot identify what grade the tumor is. Okay. Secondly, if it is high grade tumor then probably will require radiation therapy as well as chemotherapy. Okay. So, so this is like there are other therapies also, but this is what is the is the I would say the basis of or the mainstay of treatment. Surgery forms the mainstay. Now, surgery can be of two types. Suppose it can be if it is present in the surface location in the posterior fossa, or posterior means in the behind of the brain, where we can maximally remove the tumor without causing any deficit. Okay. Then we go ahead and do a craniotomy, meaning thereby open the, they, they remove the skull, open the brain and remove as much tumor as possible, which is called a safe maximal resection. So it won't affect patient. You see, there are two things. If I do surgery, if I don't do surgery, the tumor is causing damage to the brain. Na? Yeah, doctor. If my surgery removes the tumor and reduces the, the problem, mm. why not do it? Hmm. So right because, now uh, we have two think, evils. Uh, you are opening the brain, so skull, so it may get, uh, they may get any problems in yes. their daily life. You, you see, once you have a high grade tumor or a low grade tumor, it is definitely going to cause some problem. Hmm. Now, the, the, the science has, the, op the neurosurgery has evolved so much that sometimes we open the brain and we take out the tumor without causing any added deficit. So you are already having a problem. The, if I don't operate, the tumor is going to increase in size. Tumor is not going to stop. Yeah. It's going to increase. It's going to cause swelling. It is going to cause damage to the brain. So why not open, remove the, the tumor part and give the brain the space and uh, the required treatment. So it, there definitely there is a risk. But if you don't do, yes. the risk no is more. Risk. So among you have to choose among the you have to choose among the the lesser evil. The other thing I was talking about, this is an open surgery called as craniotomy. The other okay. thing is, okay, let us do the biopsy. Okay, I just want to go inside. This called as that this biopsy can be done either by uh, stereotactic or frame without frame. I don't want to go into the depth of it. It meaning thereby suppose this is the tumor. I go, I pass the needle and take a small piece of the tumor. 
and then I see another microscope and the pathologist gives us the grade. So for the dividend. biopsy also you have to open the brain doctor? No, you see the tumor is inside the brain. So I have to go inside the brain to take the biopsy. Mm -hmm. So even when I do open or even I do stereotactic or minimal invasive, I have to do the biopsy. People have a myth that biopsy is different. Biopsy is, yes. is, is, is both. Whenever we remove any tissue from any part of the body, especially from the brain, we always biopsy it. Biopsy means examining the tissue which we have sent under the microscope by the pathologist to see what is the tumor and what grade of the tumor is. It can be done minimally invasive, it can be done open, it can be done in different ways. So how it will be the treatment doctor? Yeah, you see this surgery is a treatment. Now suppose there are three scenarios. I have done the surgery and I found it is a grade 1 tumor. Now second possibility is it is as a grade 2 tumor or grade 3, grade 4 tumor. Suppose it is grade 1 tumor and I have removed completely the tumor. So then probably you, you can just follow the tube patient and watch the patient. Suppose the tumor comes back again and so is there any chance see. doctor? Yes, any tumor which has come on its own can come again. Na? Okay. So there is a chance that the tumor may come mm -hmm. but if we have removed completely the, the, the gross total resection have less chances of recurrence. Mm -hmm. So if we have removed completely there are less chances that the tumor may come back. Okay. But so you follow it up with serial MRIs and if there is no tumor you, you just uh, follow it. Suppose I have removed the tumor but I could not remove completely there is substantial amount of tumor remaining then we consider the possibility of radiation and chemotherapy. Okay. Then comes so great. with that it will go doctor? With that it, the progression reduces. You see tumor okay. is there. It will definitely grow. Mm. Now what has happened? I could remove only this because of surgery. Either why? Because it is in a very important location of the brain. Yeah. It is inoperable. Suppose I try to remove, I may cause deficit to the patient. That okay. is, suppose I say the tumor is in a very important area of the brain. I could remove 50%. I could remove 50% more, but if the patient will be bedridden, would you like to be bedridden? No, no, no. So we will remove the portion which is which is safe enough without causing any any deficit, mm -hmm. and the remaining portion can be taken care by radiation or chemotherapy. Okay. Suppose it's a high-grade tumor, irrespective of whether you have removed complete or no, you have to go for radiation and chemotherapy. Okay. After the surgery also? After the surgery, up. you have to go for, if it is grade 4, you have to go for radiation and chemotherapy. There is no... Uh, In no grade other. 2, doctor? Grade 2 is, 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 is borderline. If you have removed completely, you can follow. If you have not removed completely, there is a large amount of tumor which is remaining, then you have to go for radiation. That Then you have got, then you, it's a, then you have what is called as tumor board. Mm -hmm. in which there are different specialities of doctors are there that the neurosurgeon is there radiation oncologist is there medical oncologist is there and then we all sit across and feel that this patient requires radiation or chemotherapy okay. no this patient requires observation and th then we decide and follow accordingly what about the medication doctor medication suppose we have done the surgery mm. the most important thing which we or the medication which we give is to prevent fits or seizures because mm -hmm. once we have operated upon the brain there is a chance that you will develop fits or not. So we always or we prefer giving anti-epileptics. Second thing we always give some antibiotic for some time so that the infection and everything subsides. Thirdly is like a steroid medication we usually give because if there is edema that will go off. So brain okay. tumor edema is usually response only to steroids. Mm -hmm. So we give it for a time specific specific time in a dose and once it starts going we stop the steroids but we continue with anti-epileptics for a longer period of time okay. till, till, the, till we feel that or till the, we see that there are no seizures, patient is seizure free, we do tests to confirm patient will not get fits then we will stop anti-epileptics. Okay. So after having these all how often they should check themselves doctor? Yeah. Normally what happens it varies from upon the grade of the tumor. If I have a grade 4 tumor then they usually come for serial follow-ups maybe in first initially one month then they come in three months okay. after the radiation and then we we do the, the serial or surveillance scan like mri with contrast to see whether the tumor is coming or not meaning suppose the patient has undergone surgery after six months six months is over but he is fine 
but we do inst repeat the scan to see whether small tumor is coming or not sometimes small tumor will not cause any problem na yeah, so doctor. we try to pick it up early so that yeah. we can accordingly plan our treatment okay. if it is grade 1 or uh, oh, then we do space the mri because we have done the mri we have seen that amount of resection we have done then we space it more and after some time when the patient is doing fine we stop doing the imaging also okay. unless until he develops a new problem or a new deficit Okay. Deficit meaning by suppose he has got some weakness or the headache or some other thing mm -hmm. which which warrants us to do a scan. Okay. You advise any uh, particular things to them doctor? Normally you say we, we ask them uh, like you see uh, anybody for, for me what I say to the patient is that once they have taken the risk of, of going for the surgery you say it's a risk and secondly they have spent so much of money then they have taken a big uh, when you say the tumor the whole family is afraid so i always encourage them to go back to their life as much as possible number one that is my aim of doing surgery and and for them taking so much of risk a risk to life you have yes, done yes. and there is no point sitting on the bed and not doing anything number one number two the biggest risk they have is once they take radiation i always prefer them to be avoiding uh, going outside because infection and other problems may happen okay. but after some time the patient is doing fine then i uh, and he's on anti epileptics i advise them to avoid driving and swimming because mm -hmm. once you are driving and you get a fit it is not good for you okay. as well as for the other person okay. so these are the few precautions i always tell them then secondly i always encourage to go back to the work if they find it difficult then i always try to tell them that whatever best suits them they can do or they change their their vocation but they should be i always promote them to have a livelihood mm -hmm. and uh, and and that is what that is what that drives them and that also keeps them busy so yeah doctor would you like to give a take home message yeah the take home message is okay i i think everybody gets a headache but as i told you if you have any of these features of a headache please don't neglect it yeah. number one number two we see a lot of patients who have got fits or seizures sometimes they just don't get investigated they go for traditional treatment yeah you can go any treatment but i strongly recommend that you should get get investigated for it before it sometimes when the patient comes it becomes too late so get investigated for it number three if it is a benign tumor the outcomes are usually good so mm -hmm. every brain tumor is not bad okay okay glioma grade ones they usually do well mm -hmm. all, all tumors are bad so please uh, if you have any of these problems consult a doctor before or just leaving it to a traditional treatment or self treatment yeah, i think that is that is what is the take home message for me for, thank for you. you thank you doctor thank, thank you so much for your valuable time thank you what type of sports injuries you come across I come across uh, sports injuries mainly around the knee joint and around the shoulder joint. Okay. They are the most common injuries uh, in sports persons and mostly football is the main thing, football and basketball mm -hmm. and recently kabaddi. Kabaddi. Uh, okay. They are all con uh, uh, kabaddi contact sports where the incidence of uh, ligament injuries and tears are uh, very high. Unlike in the west, there is a lot of incidence with uh, shoulder joint shoulder joint uh, with the javelin throw and all the things which they do with the rugby american football yeah all these things